You know the mystery around Satoshi Nakamoto, right? Bitcoin's anonymous creator. Of course, it's one of the biggest puzzles in tech. Well, there's this strong theory that Satoshi wasn't just one person, maybe a group. Mm -hmm. And our deep dive today goes right into that world, looking at the Liberty and Cryptography list, uh, LibTech. Ah, yes, LibTech, a really crucial piece of the puzzle. Exactly. It was this private online forum, late 90s, early 2000s, kind of a melting pot for early crypto thinking. A crucible, really. Yeah, a crucible. So we're going to explore what it was, who was there, and how those debates you know, shaped digital cash and eventually Bitcoin. Okay, let's dig in. LibTech. It was a private mailing list. Mm. Nick Sabo started it maybe around 98. Right. And it became this meeting point for, well, libertarian futurists and cypherpunks. So people thinking about freedom, tech, privacy. Exactly. Using strong crypto for political change, for privacy. Mm -hmm. And you had figures like Sabo, Wei Dai, Halfini all actively involved. Heavy hitters even back then. Definitely. And what's really interesting, you also had academic economists joining in. People like Lawrence White, George Selgin. Economists. What were they bringing to the crypto table? Ideas about competition and currency, uh, free banking concepts. They were basically trying to merge these economic theories with cryptography. Wow. Okay. That blend sounds potent, hmm. but challenging, right? How did those different perspectives actually work together? Well, that's where the real action was. They were tackling huge questions. Like what? Like, how do you create digital money that's scarce but without a central bank saying so. How do you stop someone spending the same digital coin twice, mm. trustlessly? The double spending problem. Precisely. And how do you make it censorship resistant? Truly decentralized. These weren't just thought experiments. Yeah. No, this is where Sabo first put forward BitGold. On LibTech. On LibTech. And Wade I introduced B Money there too. Okay, so BitGold and B Money, these were precursors to Bitcoin. Absolutely. Concrete proposals. BitGold had this proof-of-work mining idea, very similar to Bitcoin. B-Money aimed for an anonymous distributed digital cash. They weren't just trying to tweak existing money. They wanted something totally new, independent. And this was all debated openly, well, privately on the list. Intensely debated. You even had side debates spill out, like Hal Finney and Larry White arguing in Extra P magazine about whether an internet native currency was even possible. So the connections to Bitcoin seem pretty direct then. Oh, undeniably. I mean, Sabo himself later called Bitcoin an implementation of the big gold idea. He did, wow. And Satoshi, in the Bitcoin white paper, explicitly cited Wei Dai's B-Money. Okay, that's a direct link. And then there's Hal Finney, central to LibTech. He wasn't just an early supporter of Bitcoin. He received the very first Bitcoin transaction from Satoshi. The first ever transaction. Incredible. Right. So people speculate, you know, was Satoshi Dai, Sabo, yeah. Finney... Maybe some combination. But the key thing isn't necessarily who Satoshi was. Exactly. The key takeaway is how these pioneers, through these intense private libtech discussions, hammered out the intellectual foundations for Bitcoin. Its unique design feature. Yes, like its fixed supply path, that 21 million coin limit. Where did that come from? Well, it was influenced by economic ideas debated right there. Things like quantity commitment devices, basically ways to credibly commit to a fixed supply or a predictable issuance rate in a decentralized system. They were actively trying to solve that problem. It's amazing. So LibTech wasn't just some obscure mailing list. Not at all. It was fundamental, a space where brilliant people clashed, collaborated, and fused ideas from economics and cryptography. To build something revolutionary. It really shows that huge innovations often don't come from a lone genius moment. It's years of debate, often behind the scenes. Synthesis? Absolutely. And that brings up a really interesting question for you listening right now. How many other potentially world-changing ideas are being debated right now? Quietly? In forms we don't even know exist? What new crucibles are out there just waiting for their moment? 